Welcome everybody to the Mark No Free Head Coaches Show. As always, joined here by the head coach of Sacred Heart Football, Mark No Free, whose team is now 3-0 after the 44-14 win over Assumption the other night here at Sacred Heart. It was a great night. You guys get the W, fireworks afterwards, and it was a really nice atmosphere here at campus. And off to another good start. Just kind of talk about generally your thoughts about uh, the team's beginning, the season 3-0, and that good feeling that's going on around campus right now, and a, a nice victory on Saturday. Uh, well, obviously, you know, our goal was to start fast and, uh, you know, take one game at a time, and, and I think we're doing that right now, and obviously you want to be 3-0 and at this point. Um, it hasn't come easy. You know, we've had some good teams here at Campus Field the first three games of the year, and it's been a fight, which every game is going to be like that from here on out, and uh, I thought our kids answered the bell, and rise to the challenge that was given to them and um, the main thing is that we need to stay focused and continue to get better each week. Um, we talked about it yesterday, our practice is not, you know, play a good game and then, you know, have a letdown and then play a good game and go up and down. We want to make sure we continue to climb each week and, and get better so by the end of the season we're playing our best football. But um, I still think there's a lot of room for improvement. I think the kids uh, understand that and I, I told them yesterday that I'm looking forward to seeing the offense, defense and special teams play four quarters together on the same page for all four 60 minutes and, and see what type of team we really could be. Yeah, because it was a little bit back and forth. Assumption goes on a 14-3 run here. There was that great catch down the left sideline that turned into a touchdown. And you guys responded, though, by really slamming the door after that 14-3 run. Really a solid two and a half quarters. And I know you want the full effort, but what does it say about the team to be able to kind of go into lockdown mode after a, a, a tough stretch there? on that run by assumption? Well, it's good to have. I mean, it's good when the kids make plays when they need to be made, but um, you'd like them to continue to be a little bit more focused and have a little bit more energy for the game. Um, I, I understand that they're a senior group, and I have a lot of kids that have been together for four years and been on the field for four years. Um, but our main focus is to stay locked in for 60 minutes and, and do your job and, and stay focused and have the positive energy for the whole 60 minutes and not only turn it on when it needs to be turned on but play the whole game that way and that's and then we talked about it, and that's what good teams do and that's what great teams do is they play 60 minutes no matter who they're playing um, and they're locked in and they're focused for 60 minutes and they're playing their best football and that's that's the point that we're trying to get across and that's what we need to do if we want to continue this run. One thing I noticed about the game is on both sides a lot of false starts a lot of penalties at the line. Now you guys run a hurry up offense that can give defensive teams fits but how hard is it to get in that rhythm and stay on sides when you run that quick hurry up offense uh, it's it's okay I mean you know you have your at the beginning of the season or maybe during camp or the first game you'll have a few of those but you know game three you should be doing that now and those are some of the things that we need to clean up and get better at we had 13 penalties the other night you know and um, obviously not just offensively we had a couple on defense we had a few on special teams um, but those are the things that, that set you back you know and you know when you're in the red zone going in the score and you get a five yard penalty and you know it backs you up and uh, it's frustrating I know for the offensive coaches uh, they got certain plays that they want to call and you know you look like you're going in and it kind of it's a letdown. It deflates you a little bit, and you, you got to kind of, like Coach Bowles says, snap and clear. But those are the things that we're trying to avoid here from here on out and not hurting ourselves and shooting ourselves in the foot. On the positive side, Sacred Heart uh, gets a couple of guys into the, into the mode offensively that you know maybe we hadn't seen as much in the first two games. Obviously, Sean Bell did a great job in the backfield. Moses Webb also got in the end zone uh, a, a number of catches, a couple of really big-time mm -hmm. playmaker plays. And weekend before it was Jackson King, this weekend it was Moses Webb. How important is it to get that deep receiving core kind of all involved early on? Well, it was good. You know, Moses had a big game for us last year versus Bucknell and uh, obviously versus Monmouth last year, and uh, he's one of the key playmakers. I mean, you know, Moses is only a redshirt sophomore for us, um, but he's been on the field now for two years, and uh, the other day I think he had three catches for over 90 yards, a touchdown, and two first downs for us. So he's a big play kid, and, and Coach Bowles does a good job getting the ball to our playmakers and, and seeing what he did Saturday, what Jackson King did last week, uh, Sean Bell this week. It's nice to have comfort and have back backups and kids that rotate in or some depth that if anybody goes down we have another person ready to go that can step up and fill that void and and those kids have done a great job and it's well deserving for them and and that's what you try and get to as a as a program that's good is you know not only your starters but the kids that rotate in or the backups can come in and give you the same output as the kid in front of them um, who just you know either sophomore or junior opposed to a senior and uh, I think we're getting to that point now but we still got some other holes we got to fill and we're looking for some younger kids to step up the way those kids have. Of course it's nice when you have a quarterback who can 
run and throw and really run that read option so well as RJ Noel does. He gets me at least once a game on a fake handoff, where I call it wrong. Uh, he's so, so good at that, and it's something you run so effectively. How tough has he got to be uh, to scout against because of all the weapons that are in his repertoire? Uh, you know, he's a great athlete. You know, we talked about it last year, and it's everything that you want in a quarterback. Um, he's a competitor. He's a kind of what we call like a gym rat. You know, it's all football with him, and he puts his time in during the season, out of season, off the field, and um, he's a dual threat. I mean, those kids are hard to plan for. You know, and as a defensive coordinator, you gotta respect the fact that he's gonna, you know, tuck it and go. Um, is he throwing? You know, and then when it does break down, he can get outside the pocket. Uh, and then you add the fact that, you know, we have our offense is a, a zone read type, you know, spread offense. And, you know, there's times where he's going to hand it off. And there's times he's going to pull it. And there's there's a lot of things you have to prepare for. And, and RJ is a quarterback that gives you those dimensions. And it's, it's great to have an athlete back there that can do those things and make plays. Chris Rogers tied the all-time field goal record and set the all-time point after record. Now, the point after record really is indicative of the offense being as good as it's been in his time here, but I mean, what a nice thing that must be to have a reliable kicker that has uh, put together a really nice career here in, in, in that regard of the yeah, game. Yeah, Chris has done a great job. You know, it's, it's a big part of our offense, and, uh, you know, Coach Bowles gives him a, a red jersey for the red, the red offense in practice and makes him wear because he's part of them, and he sits in on the offensive meetings and things. And, you know, he's a great weapon to have, and he's been consistent last year and this year. And uh, he's done a great job, and anytime you know, we get down into that red zone, I know I can call on him uh, no matter what the situation is, and I got a good chance or a high percentage that he's going to make it. All right, Buck Nell's coming in. 2-0, and you're 3-0. and They're coming off the bye week. They're a tough team. Um, this is a great non-conference opportunity again for you. On homecoming weekend, a 1 o'clock game with, I'm sure, plenty of alumni coming back. So another really exciting Saturday coming up here at Campus Field between two good teams. Yeah, they're, they're a physical football team. I mean, last year it was, uh, it was back and forth. Um, it was a very defensive game last year, and I think uh, we were up 9-0 in the fourth quarter. And uh, we put one in with like a minute to go to make it 16. But uh, they're big. They're a big physical team. They're very good on defense. Uh, you know, we got our work cut out for us. It's a, a good football team. They're well coached, you know, and uh, Coach Susan does a great job down there. Um, another Patriot League school, which has had football for a long time and a tradition. Um, I know they were in the hunt last year and they were close to making the playoffs. So I'm expecting them to come here. It's going to be physical. They're going to be well coached. And they're going to be ready to go. So it's up for us now to step up to the challenge and cut down on the mistakes we had this week and be ready for a real physical football game. Great. Good luck next weekend. Good luck this week in practice. Thank you. Mark Nofri, as always, the head coach of Sacred Heart Football, joining us as he does every week. We're getting ready for week four, the final of four games in a row here at Campus Field to start the season. And it's 1 o'clock, homecoming, Saturday afternoon at Campus Field.